Hello friends, welcome to my channel. We find videos for 10th, inter and even other courses. But we don't find videos for diploma. My channel is for all those diploma students who are searching for such videos. Here we are going to deal with each topic in every subject in a detailed and fun way. I welcome you all to Stardom Diploma. This is my first video. So let's not waste much time and start our journey. Today, let's start the topic Units and Dimensions. The first part is Units and Dimensions. What is a unit? Reference standard for measuring a physical quantity is called a unit. Wait a minute, what is a physical quantity? In simple words, all quantities which are measurable are called as physical quantities. Physical quantities are divided into three types. Fundamental physical quantities, derived physical quantities and supplementary physical quantities. According to these three types, units are also divided into fundamental units, derived units and supplementary units. Coming to fundamental physical quantities, those are the quantities which are independent of other quantities. These quantities are also known as absolute or base quantities. The seven main fundamental physical quantities and their units are given here. Length is measured in meters, mass measured in kilogram, luminous intensity measured in candela, amount of substance measured in mole, time measured in seconds, electric current measured in ampere and temperature measured in Kelvin. Coming to the second type of physical quantity, it is derived physical quantity. The name itself suggests that it is derived from other quantities. Derived physical quantity is a quantity derived from fundamental physical quantity. Its origin is from fundamental physical quantities. If we take example of velocity, we know that velocity is displacement divided by time. And displacement is the length between point A to point B. And time, we know it is measured in seconds. Which means velocity is length divided by time. We got to know that length and time both are fundamental quantities. Since velocity is derived from fundamental physical quantities, velocity comes under derived physical quantity. Some other examples of derived physical quantities are area, volume, density, speed, acceleration, etc. Third type of physical quantity is supplementary physical quantities. Besides seven fundamental physical quantities, two other quantities are categorized as supplementary physical quantities. They are plane angle and solid angle. Plane angle has unit radian and the unit of solid angle is steradian. Represented by symbols RAD and SR respectively. Moving forward, dimension. Now what is dimension? Dimension of a physical quantity are the powers to which the fundamental quantities must be raised to represent the given physical quantity. We will understand in a simple way. Representing a physical quantity or a derived quantity in terms of fundamental quantities is called dimension. That is powers of fundamental quantities are raised to represent a derived quantity. Fundamental quantities, all seven, either length, mass, time, temperature, etc. It can be anything, but their power is going to describe a physical quantity, that is a derived quantity. Now, let us take a simple example. Volume. If we take volume, uh, the formula of volume is length into breadth into height. 
we know length length is a fundamental quantity and breadth breadth is also length and height height is also vertical length so all three are length so volume can be written as length to the power 3 that is length cube here length cube is a dimension of the physical quantity volume now let us take an example we take a physical quantity force we know force is equal to the product of mass and acceleration force is equal to mass into acceleration mass we know that mass is a fundamental quantity so keep mass aside now see acceleration since acceleration is a derived quantity we can write it as a combination of fundamental quantities in simpler way acceleration can be written as velocity divided by time again time time is a fundamental quantity so keep it aside now velocity velocity is also a derived quantity velocity can be written as length divided by time here force is been written as a combination of fundamental quantities that is force is written as mass into length divided by time square we can write force is equal to mass into length into time to the power minus 2 this is a dimension of the physical quantity force force the power of mass is 1 length is 1 and time is minus 2 these powers are representing the physical quantity so the dimension of force will be like 1 comma 1 comma minus 2 and volume 0 comma 3 comma 0 the first zero is representing that it has no mass and the last zero it is not having any time next dimensional formula it is an expression for a physical quantity in terms of fundamental physical quantity is called dimensional formula we also have a principle called principle of homogeneity of dimensions now what is it according to this principle the dimensions of all the terms in a physical expression should be same it means if we take an equation it would contain several terms both on left hand side and right hand side the dimension of each and every term should be same if we take an physical expression s is equal to ut plus half at square all terms in this expression should be same that means their dimensions should be same we are taking on left hand side there is only one term s so the dimension of s should be equal to the other terms of right hand side that is ut and half at square if we take another example v is equal to u plus at in this equation at is added to u so a at is a separate term and u is a separate term if we look at their dimensions the dimension of v that is final velocity will be l t to the power minus 1 and u u is initial velocity initial velocity or final velocity dimensions will be same so the dimension of u will also be l t to the power minus 1 next at a is acceleration we know that the dimension of acceleration is l t to the power minus 2 and the remaining t t is time so at will be l t to the power minus 2 into t so here we are having three terms v u and at so the according to principle of homogeneity of dimensions each and every terms dimension should be same the dimension of v is l t to the power minus 1 u is also l t to the power minus 1 and at solve and it will also become l t to the power minus 1 so here we are having all the three terms dimension l t to the power minus 1 so we can say that this expression is following the principle of homogeneity of dimension till now we have seen what are dimensions 
and how to find the dimensions of a given physical quantity. Now we will see what are the use of this dimensional analysis. It is used for conversion of units. That means to convert one system of units to other system of units. Generally, we are having four system of units. CGS system, MKS system, FPS system and the system which we are using in present is the S. Their abbreviations are for CGS system, centimeter, gram and second. MK system, meter, kilogram and second. FPS system, foot, pound and second. SI system, system of international units. Under this SI system only we are having the fundamental units that is base units, supplementary units and derived units. So dimensional analysis is used to convert one system of units to other system of units. Use this formula for converting one system of units to other system of units. N1 U1 is equal to N2 U2 where N1 and N2 are the numericals and U1 is a dimension of a physical quantity in first system and U2 the dimension of the same physical quantity in another system. By using this formula we can convert it. Dimensional analysis is also used to check the correctness of a given physical equation. Dimensional correctness means in that equation the terms of left hand side and right hand side dimensions should be same. We have already read about principle of homogeneity of dimensions which states that all the terms in that equation should have same dimension. So if the dimensions on left hand side and right hand side are same then the equation is said to be dimensionally correct. And by this dimensional analysis, we can even derive equations. Not only uses, we are also having limitations of this dimensional analysis. By this method, the value of dimensionless constant cannot be calculated. Dimensionless constant is a numerical value of a quantity, but it is not having any dimension. So, examples of this dimensional constants are like mathematical constants. If we take pi, pi is a dimensionless constant. It is having a constant value but it is not having any dimensions. So quantities like this cannot be calculated by this method. This method the equation containing trigonometrical, exponential and logarithmic terms cannot be analyzed. That means if, if an equation is given which is having logarithmic terms or exponential terms then we cannot determine their dimensions and if a physical quantity depends on more than three factors then relation among them cannot be established because we can have only three equations by equating the powers of m l and t if we are having more than three factors that is other than mass length and time then we cannot establish any relation among them and other thing is that this dimensional analysis does not give any information whether the physical quantity is a vector or and this was today's video hope you all start the topic if you still have any doubts or have any suggestions feel free to post it in the comment section below please support my channel and don't forget to like share and subscribe even press the bell icon to get new updates okay friends see you all in the next video